Smash Bros. is a cheater game, fellas. We've been over this time. Wait, what? In time. And time again. <laughs> However, cheater levels clearly vary per character. Some might have a move that's a bit much in terms of how fast or strong it is, while others' whole designs are meant to test your patience. In this video, I will be going over every character and rank them on how much of a cheater they are, from the honest tier to giga cheater tier. Before we get into it though, we have to establish what it means to be a cheater. To be dishonest in Smash Bros usually involves having a move or ability or mechanic that performs in an unusual way. For example, when two strong moves hit at the same time, the usual expectations are that it clanks or trades. Moves with super armor, however, disregard that entirely, proving to be a very clear cheater mechanic. Basically anything that can snatch your stock away unexpectedly is gonna stray farther away from the honest spectrum. With the clarifications out of the way, let's jump into the first tier, the honest tier. For a character with a frame one move, Duck Hunt is pretty straightforward. A lot of zoners in this game, for some fucked up reason, are good at up close boxing since they got some fast moves. Duck Hunt does not possess those, and in fact probably has one of the worst nares in the game. So yeah, honest tier for you buddy. One of the most memed on characters, she just kinda tries her best. Even with the hypest clips from Void and stuff, you'll just keep seeing the same Thanos quote from internet comedians. Yeah, Sheik is a bit too sincere for her own good. Fox has been called an honest character in Smash 4 and Ultimate. Some disagree very strongly, but I'm on the honest boat. Just look at him in Melee. And look at him now, and tell me this character isn't out here just trying to survive. Listen fellas, I know I mean her, but I'm not biased. I swear, Lucina is a genuinely fair and balanced character. Unlike her brother Marth, she has no tipper mechanic, no comeback factor, just a sword and some swag. Her neutral beam might be the only thing out of the ordinary, sure, but if that's the craziest thing you got, then you're definitely in the honest tier. I feel like it's in Isabel's nature to be as genuine as possible. I think the fishing rod is the only thing that kinda cheats, but half the time, it doesn't even work. So yeah, she's chilling in this tier. Okay, this one might be a little bit out of left field, but I truly believe Toon Link, definitely not this one, is kinda honest. Nothing really strikes me as cheater unlike his brothers. Like sure, he can be annoying, but that doesn't mean he's dishonest. That's it for the honest tier. If you main any of these characters, it probably means you feel superior for having an honest main and use that as a solace for when you go 0-2 in tournaments. Right before I jump into this next tier fellas though, consider subscribing and giving a like if you haven't yet. This vid took a lot of work, so if you want to see more, the support would help a ton. I think Greninja is really slippery and annoying to hit, but I don't think he necessarily cheats. His design is that he's literally a ninja Pokemon, so it makes sense that he's hard to hit and has some crazy jump height. Overall, relatively honest, but not as much as the characters in the tier below. Despite being a menace online, the Samai aren't as fraudulent as you'd think. Like, yeah, her projectiles are annoying, but eh, it's nothing that makes me raise an eyebrow. Same idea in that her down beam making her small is annoying, and her grab being pretty long can be tricky, but other than that, I think she's overall pretty fine. Meta Knight is probably trying his best to cheat like he did in Smash 4, but it's just not there. Fantastic recovery, but that's pretty much it from him that makes me go, well, that's a little unfair. You can tell Marth wants to cheat, but along the way he f***ed up entirely. Because he's just so inconsistent with tippers, I think the best I can put him is a tier above Lucina. Just not menacing at all. If this were Smash 4, this would be different. But Korn is similar to Marth in that yeah, she tries to cheat, but it's nothing crazy. While she does have long range, the introduction of Byleth, the Belmonts, Sephiroth, Min Min, means her range isn't even anything surprising anymore. And no crazy counter? Hmm, top of semi-honest here. Best I can do. The Belmont's range is a little on the dishonest side, but other than that, nothing really deceptive. Their ledge driving goes kind of crazy, but overall, I'd say he's more annoying than a cheater. And that's it for the semi-honest tier, as spicy as salt. This next tier is where we start seeing signs of criminal activity, but they're not full-on wild and just yet. Heavies are by nature not honest characters, but DDD is pretty bad, so he's thriving down here. His main gimmick are Gordos, which can be swatted back incredibly easily, and if you get hit by his Giga Hammer, I don't know what to tell you. His recovery is annoying to Edgar though, and with the famous sucking cuck, I think it makes sense to have him up here. Ganon is fun as hell, but boy is he awful. Big smash attacks, that's really all that he's got, the kind of sort of cheats. And a suicide side B, but you literally have to be just standing there to get hit by it. It's not good, neither is Ganon. Let's move on. Ike's Nair is just a bit too silly for me to consider it honest, even after they nerfed it. Along with the up B that can just swipe a stock away if you're not careful, puts my boy in this tier. 
Shora is still relatively new and while very clearly lame, I think might show promising potential of cheating in the future. For the moment, I'll put him here given the loop Shara thing and the up B and a side B just being too good a recovery and for the lagless smash attacks. But overall, I don't think he sins too much. Bowser Jr. admires his father and clearly took a page out of his dishonest tendencies. But Jr. can't read, so that page is kind of useless. He has some random cheater tendencies like having a stupid jab that murders, a really fast F smash, and the cart being wonky. But overall, he's not that bad. I think if he were a better character, he'd be a lot more toxic though, for sure. Villager is not as honest as his dog, Isabel. A tree and the bowling ball specifically can steal games away when you don't expect it. And his owner should not have a great nair like he does. Ridley got some annoying moves with side B and a big old nair, but I don't think cheese is the word I'd use to describe him. If this move were actually good, then we'd be talking, but unfortunately, maybe fortunately, it's not. Robin is hilariously designed, where they can only cheat to their max potential when they have their magic stuff going on. Granted, the max potential of cheese isn't too high, but it's a lot more noticeable when you have absorption powers or one of the most buff nairs in the game. Having one invincible move, I can maybe glance over, but two? That's where it becomes a bit much. For the most part though, I feel like a lot of Palu's moves are just straight up good, as opposed to dishonest or cheesy, so that's why she's not too high on the list. But still, dash attack, back here, I see you. Wolf smash attacks are a bit too cheater for my liking. They're all really good and have hella good frame data for some reason. To top it off, this fucking limb is ridiculous sometimes, so yeah, he has his moments of cheater for sure. Mewtwo, Disable, and Confusion are his two biggest cheater components. One move that ignores your shield and is weird as hell to get out of, and a projectile that can murder at 70 by association. Mewtwo's weight and his dumbass tail hitbox are the only thing that counteracts his potential cheater level, but overall he's definitely not too honest. Yoshi's double jump armor is what puts him in this tier for me. Like look how stupid this shit looks, it's definitely made me do some double takes. Having an unpokable shield isn't too crazy, but definitely doesn't help his case either. Young Link is in this tier solely for his ludicrous lack of end lag on any of his moves. No move from him makes me go, wow, he's carried, but the overall speed he packs is kinda out there. Sonic, although very annoying, I don't think he's a crazy cheater. He's ridiculously fast, sure, which is why I put him in this tier, but this is another case of something being more annoying than busted, you know? Zelda is tough for me, like on one hand I want to say she cheats, but on the other hand, she's just kind of pathetic. Like take her forward air and back air, strong as fuck, but the sweet spot is only active for literally one frame, and it has the smallest sweet spot known to man, like come on, you can't help but feel bad at this point. Down B and neutral B are not full on cheater, just Kinda, so I think having her in semi-cheater works. Pit mains have successfully coordinated the most calculated and blatantly false propaganda in Smash Ultimate by having everyone think he's honest. First of all, he has the most unexpectedly free combo throw I've ever seen in my life. Down throw, for some reason, will not only start pit super combos, but also connect into back air to kill you at the ledge at 100% pretty consistently. Don't even get me started on the arrows, I don't want to hear it, he's cemented in my mind as at least a semi-cheater. And Pit, a little bit more than Dark Pit, just because of the arrows. Falco is a bit more on the cheater side than Fox, but not quite as much as Wolf. I've never played a game with a Falco and thought, oh, I'm at 80%? Yeah, no, I deserve that. You just have to endure the cutscenes that happen with this character and hope he fucks up somewhere. Thankfully, he's not as cheesy when it comes to killing, which is what really matters, but overall, still not honest. And that's it for the semi-cheater tier, where one small change to any of these characters can easily convert them into the dark side. And now, fellas, we've reached the cheater tier. Every character from here on out has either a meter or a notably stupid move or just something about them that facilitates dishonesty. There's nothing too crazy in this tier, but... No one ever would describe these characters as honest. The only child that's been here since the beginning, Ness is not only an asshole, but also a cheater. Having annoying projectiles is one thing, but turning yourself into a projectile to yeet yourself onto unsuspecting victims and kill them at 30% is something else. That and having a million moves to mash on on shield while also having one of the strongest throws in the game is kind of a fucked up duo. Falcon may not have a sword like his cousin Ganondorf, but that shit's overrated when you have two minus seven smash attacks on shield. Falcon also thrives on grabbing you once and basically killing you from it. And it's almost always from the smash attack in the air they possess. Also, side B randomly killing you at zero is always a grand old time. Inkling's ink mechanic was the first sign that Ultimate was gonna be a bit shady with the character honesty. Most of the time, I feel like I don't notice the ink as much. Like, it doesn't increase the knockback, so I don't get as frustrated by it. Inkling side B, though, is what really carries her cheater legacy for me. Legit the only bearing move in the game that moves, and so I think that alone puts them in this tier. 
Ness's brother is just annoying as he is. While Lucas can also yeet himself at opponents, it's not as destructive, but that's where the good ends. Lucas has a rogue demon that can do this shit, and I don't even know what the hell it is. This down smash is also not fair at all. Like, I think it's the first move from a character on this list that isn't just good, but just straight up stupid. Like, there's no other move like this. Pac-Man has the best of both worlds where he has a great time as his owner, but also has stupidly fast aerials so he can combo your ass, and also has one of the best recoveries in the game. Don't even get me started on this bell and the unethical water physics that he possesses. Like, he's not even trying to hide he's a cheater at this point, just look at him. But Tui alone is bullshit as hell, dude. Like, look at this flying orb of pain. Look how red it is. You know it's cheese when plant mates just stand there and Tui and just wait for you to do something. In fact, they dare you to do something. That plus poison gas, a wonky ass down B that can break shields makes me think this character was designed to cheese. Olimar having different Pikmin that he can optimize for maximum cheese feels disrespectful to people who have to play against them. It's like they're not considering my feelings when I have to see a slave master elf in the corner hurling small animals at me. Though ethically very clearly wrong, he could be a bigger cheater than he is now, so he's in this tier for now. Don't get me wrong, fellas. MKLeo is really, really good, but Byleth isn't quite as honest as you think. This up B, for instance, snatches that ass if you're not careful. You don't even have to be off stage. Sometimes you can be minding your own damn business and you'll still get sucked. The outrageous percent that Tipper kills at, plus having some of the easiest shield breaking potential in the game, makes it so that Byleth has his own tricks going on. Every DLC character with a meter thing is automatically going to be at least a cheater. And it says something about Banjo that he's the only one on this tier. Wonder Wing is a good move, but because there's only 5 of them in stock, it feels a lot less broken than it otherwise might be. The egg projectiles drive me crazy too, but again, it's more annoying than it is broken. And if Wonder Wing is by far the most busted aspect you got going on, then he's not gonna score too high on the cheater list. As the oldest of the three brothers, Link is the biggest cheater in the group. I could write a novel about his neutral air and how broken it is, but him also having his remote bomb is a little bit much. He can use it to recover, to ledge trap, to kill so easily. You don't even have to explode it for people to be scared, it just has to exist, and you will automatically respect it. It's too much, man. Link cheats, and he's proud. That's it for the cheater tier, the most barebone cheaters in Smash, but boy they still wear that like a badge of honor. Next we have the big cheater tier. Which is a step above the fellas below and how dishonest they are, they probably have a number of cheater moves to rely on. Where if you play with them, it's very important you keep your cool before they strike. As I said before, heavies are by nature cheaters. With Bowser being the heaviest one out there, it's no exception. He lives things no one else can. He can swipe away stocks with any of his smash attacks that have armor, by the way. And also some other unfair moves, like his gargantuan forward air that hits behind him. Definitely cheats. Rarely, if ever, do I feel truly outskilled by an online Bowser. You'd think the mascot of Nintendo would have a nice ethical moveset, but the fact that Cape exists as well as Flood shows that they knew what they were doing. Furthermore, they exacerbate the cheater aspects with Mario's out of shield options. A devious tactic in Smash Brothers. Mario has the best overall out of shield options in the game since he can nair, up smash, up B, back air, and up air out of shield. And they're all fantastic. You could give a toddler the controller and he'd be able to secure a comeback with Mario. No, he is something else. RNG, as we know, is the devil of all video games and oh, wouldn't you know. Game & Watch, how's it going? Hope that judgment move is treating you well. You know, the one that can basically insta-kill? The one you can combo into? You know, that one? Yeah, I hope it keeps your company in the top tier. Cheater, don't even get me started on the lagless smash attacks and this shit. Zero Suit's down B is already an extraordinarily unfair move. Like, this alone boosts the character an insane amount in this tier. Everything else about her though I would say is just good. Nothing really outright unfair, you know? Maybe Paralyzer moves are a bit much, but overall it's definitely Flip Jump that has her here. Although many agree Pika is the best character in the game, she's also kind of hard to play. Don't get me wrong, so much about the mouse is incredibly unethical from T-Jolt to Quick Attack to Back Air, but the cheat at his maximum potential is not easy, and so while he is in fact a big fat cheater, you won't see it as often as you will with other characters who have a much easier time doing so. Kirby's suck gimmick thankfully isn't always too good, mostly depends on the matchup. If you're reversing a Shulk for example, pfft, good luck kid. No, what actually puts Kirby in this tier is his down air. Fellas, I don't think anyone has more credibility than me when it comes to landing spikes, and take my word for it when I say Kirby's is by 
far the easiest to land. Not only is it the longest lasting spike in the game, but the fact this spherical dickhead also has so many jumps so that he can hover off stage for a couple of centuries makes it incredibly busted. Definitely a big cheater. Not to mention that if you get grabbed, you can basically kiss your stock goodbye sometimes. Pichu cheats, but like, not for himself, for the opponent. He's basically throwing each game, and that's pretty deceitful when you think about it, so yep, he's good here. While Roy does have a one-hit KO move, it takes way too long to charge in place for it to even be remotely useful outside of shield breaks. Nah, the jab Roy got and his ridiculous side B puts him just right in this tier. I feel like no character in the game can play as aggressively as Roy and get away with it. He's earned this spot. Krom has also earned this spot, but for a slightly different reason. He has a jab free money combo opportunity that Roy has, but instead of a stupid side B, they gave him a stupid upbeat. It's amazing seeing even top players get cheesed by this move. And as much of a burden it can be to recover with, Krom mains know they got a bunch off of it too. Diddy Kong is the only character in the game that can consistently summon a non-unique item, meaning it's something that can be summoned by the game as well. Makes it feel like Diddy ignored the item's off roll, like he just did it anyway, a clear violation. Other than that, Monkey Flip is very clearly a devious tactic, and so he definitely belongs in the Big Cheater tier overall. And we've completed the Big Cheater tier, tying the amount of regular cheaters below. Says a lot about society. The penultimate tier has a ride, fellas, with the blatant cheaters. These characters have a cheese move or mechanic that they very clearly revolve around. Dr. Mario should not be practicing medicine as he is clearly in violation of multiple ethics codes. Not only does he have this stupid same out of shield option as Mario, not only does he have the cape, not only are his moves all stronger than Mario's, but they manage to amplify the immorality of Doc by replacing the down B with the tornado. It's an absolute menace. Kills at like 50% at the ledge and he can be comboed into. Why would they do that? Rosa is almost in criminal levels of treachery due to the 2v1 aspects she displays in singles. However, Luma is not equal to Rosa. I consider this an Olimar and Pikmin situation where one is clearly superior and as a result isn't quite as unethical. Thankfully, Rosa isn't that good in this game, but the fact Luma is jacked as hell and is capable of cheater tactics definitely puts them in the top tier of cheating. The limit meter is thankfully a baby version of what it once was, so Cloud is not as high in this list as he could have once been. On the other hand, it's still very blatantly a cheater mechanic, and so Cloud for sure belongs here. Bayo is a shadow of her former devious self, and so the fact her vanilla version is still so high up shows how dumb Smash 4 was. Which time is not as good, but still pretty stupid when you think about it. Same with the combo game she's still capable of. Uh, Bayo is tough overall to make work, but when she does, it feels like he got scammed more than anything. Donkey Kong thrives off cargo throw. He can try and DI mix you off the top, or he can carry you off stage hoping you missed the tech or don't mash hard enough. Like as good as his back air is, I feel like Donkey Kongs prefer a more oonga boonga way to kill with his armored up B out of shield or cheat or throw or using his free shield break. Definitely one of the most dishonest heavies out here. But I also don't blame him because he definitely doesn't have much else going on for him. Snake? I was struggling a bit on which tier to put in. But then I remembered this move exists. And then I no longer struggled. Do I even have to go in detail with Pokemon Trainer? It's like, oh man, I'm losing. Better switch to a different character in the middle of the game. Thankfully, none of the Pokemon in particular are extreme cheaters themselves. Maybe one or two moves that are a bit much, but overall, it's the down B that's immoral more than anything. Pyra and Mithra have the same switch gimmick as Pokemon Trainer, and while there's less characters to switch to, the cheater aspect of each one is magnified tenfold. Pyra's massive poop emoji down air hitbox is insane. Not to mention the free ass combos in the up smash or up B. Mithra's ridiculous melee-ass movement speed and frame data just makes these two an absolute menace. The only saving grace is that there's nothing they can straight up cheese a stock with. Like sure, down air and up smash is a thing, but more often than not, I just feel like these characters are more so stupidly good than stupidly dishonest. But still very clearly dishonest. We fit down B. A side note, I'm noticing a pattern with immoral down B's down here. It's immoral! Not only does she heal a little bit and get stronger, but all these f***ing aspects get boosted. She falls faster, takes less damage? What the hell is this? This is actually more sinful than I originally thought. No, this definitely belongs in this tier. Ryu as a Shoto is automatically gonna cheat. He's got the auto turnaround, the cancelling, the inputs, the whole nine yards. Ryu though is honestly the least scary Shoto cheese wise, and so I respect him more for that sense. You know, he's more honest. However, honest for a Shoto isn't saying much, and so is still in this tier at the end of the day. Ken is the same idea as Ryu, but the shower spot Shoryuken being able to murder is a bit much. Like, at least Ryu's gotta get up close. Ken does whatever he wants, clearly, and so I'll put him a bit higher. 
Sephiroth as a DLC character is going to have a DLC mechanic. And that mechanic is of course going to be busted. Adds an extra jump, gives super armor smash stacks, and makes him faster and stronger. Sephiroth himself has some dirty specials as well with insta-kill, neutral B, and side B. Octo Slash is a bit much too, but sometimes it doesn't work I guess, so I let it slide. I feel like it's canon that Sephiroth isn't honest in his gameplay, so at least that works out. K. Roommates are built different. Watch this clip for when I played with my pal Brent. Really? I couldn't armor through all okay. of that? I sniped his character with the long-lasting hitbox that is Bayonetta's neutral beat. Any other character in the game would have accepted getting hit. K. Rool, however, plays an entirely different and more dishonest game. Like, look how genuinely surprised he is he was hit by that this character. Terry is the first Smash Ultimate DLC Shoto and boy does he blow his older brothers out of the water. Not only did they make a Shoto for infants, but they gave him some grade A OP DLC bullshit. The Go Meter is something that arrives just when you think you got the game in the bag. No such thing against Terry, because not only does Bust the Wolf and Power Geyser exist, but just in general, the amount of strong ass moves that connect from a jab is ludicrous. At best, you have questionable morals if you mean any of these characters. And finally, fellas, we move on to the last tier, the Giga Cheater tier. These characters are all menaces and not only have an incredibly toxic mechanic, but is overall a massive, if not entire part of their game plan. Though different among each other, the main gimmick of the Miis and being able to choose their moves is outrageous. This of course offers us devious tactic of not using a specific special till the last possible moment and cheesing your stock away with it. Devilish creatures unworthy of being ranked individually. Also cause I don't really know much about the Miis, but their reputation alone deserves them a spot in the Giga Cheater spot. Jigglypuff since her conception was a character without morals. Even in the Pokemon show she would just fuck you up while you slept, and in Smash it's literally no different. I feel like you never truly be a stock up against this character since rest will always be a factor. Unlike other one-hit KO moves that are RNG or take a while to charge up, Jix is the only one that has it at her disposal at all times and is usable FRAME 1! The only reason she's not higher is because Jigs relies more on edge guarding than rest in matches. And you can definitely have a set where Jigs just never uses rest. But it's always there, and it'll always be a factor. And for that, it sits pretty here. Wario is similar in concept to Jigs where you also got that one-hit KO move. Although this one has to build up over a period of time to be a max strength, it's much less punishable if you miss Waft compared to Rest. And so it kind of balances out in the villainy that way. I think I'm going to put him a bit higher than Jigs because of that. You know, I feel like Wario's will pretty much always go for Waft every single game. And so it's more likely to cheat. I don't think I've ever faced a Rob in Smash Ultimate and thought to myself, Hey, that was a clean match. The way that him and his asshole buddy work together in combos is actually the closest example to bullying in Smash we have. Like, yeah, I guess you can use a gyro too, but imagine spending time in the lab with a gyro just to nail combos for one character? Rob legit gotta learn one or two zero death combos and bam, it's like a mass production of cheating. Stupid ass down tilt, stupid ass side B, stupid recovery, Rob is definitely a cheater character. The Mario Brothers are much more schemey than I suspected, with Luigi being in the top tier. Here is my case. Case closed. The Smash Bros historically allows one to play only one character in any given match if you're in singles. Doubles exist if you want to play with a friend, but that's really all you're given. Then these assholes waltz in and BAM! The sanctity of 1v1s are changed forever. If you pick Ice Climbers, you will be at a numerical advantage compared to your opponent every single time. Incredibly unethical, Ice Climbers clearly deserve a spot in the Giga Cheater tier. If Peach used her float to just recover better, I'd probably let her pass, but no, of course they had to corrupt the character to her max potential with float cancels. Like what the hell is this? Literally no one else can do this. That, plus RNG and turnips? With items? Nah, you're definitely in this tier. See ya kiddo. Smash Bros literally gives you an achievement for cheating with Incineroar properly. The Sakurai knew what he was doing when he designed him. Not only is revenge incredibly wicked, but he also has his up B that can kill you at zero from a grab. Now that I think about it, every special Incineroar has will make you go, huh? At least once per game. Nah, this character is not meant for honest gameplay. Joker begins the lineage of the ultimate DLC cheater trope, and boy did he start off with a bang. The closest we ever saw to Joker's Arsene mechanic was transformation smashes in Smash 4, like with Little Mac or Bowser, but this motherfucker gets to have it during actual matches, and more than once a stock. And he can fill it up by countering! Bro, that's actually unlawful. Joker needs to call the Phantom Thieves on himself. The most frank noun that I can think of that describes Mr. Minecraft 
is asshole. Everything about him is either cringe or cheats. Let's go over some examples. Mining, cringe. Diamond Axe, cheats. Cart, cheats. TNT, cringe. Blocks, cheats and is cringe. There's more to it, but as you can see, it's overwhelmingly cheating. I think the worst offender is the diamond aspect, like that's a bit much. I get they wanted to incorporate the crafting aspect to him, but oh my goodness, they didn't have to have it to this extent. When characters with the longest range in the game got introduced, it was always in pretty small increments. Then Min Min arrived. The fact you can edgeguard characters while sitting comfortably on stage is still fucking bonkers to me. Ram Ram alone is better than most mid tiers. There's absolutely nothing moral about those arms. And the fact you can fire two at the same time in different directions makes it so that you can fuck up people in 1v1s and free for all. This character is an absolute cheater cheater. Shakurai took one look at what he did with Terry and thought, yeah, man, we can do we can do better. The most blatantly unethical aspect of Kazuya is the amount of moves he has, more than any other character in Smash Ultimate. While he doesn't have the canceling aspect the Shadows have, they instead added every other cheater aspect under the sun with tough guy, super armor smash stacks, inputs, a comeback mechanic with rage, invincibility, probably other stuff I'm forgetting. Don't even get me started on Electric Wind God Fist. Never in my life have I seen a move this goofy on Shield. Cheater. Little Mac is top three most blatantly obvious gimmicks ever. While he has nothing going on for him in the air, the treachery stems on the ground. Super armor on every single smash attack. What the fuck? Say that to yourself and think about how stupid that sounds. Most characters with armor might have heavy armor or need a condition to get super armor smash attacks or just have it on one move. Mac said fuck that and has it at all his smashes all the time. And then add KO punch on top of all that which murders the heaviest character in the game at like 40. It's basically a final smash. Mac is such a cheater character that most people don't even bother fighting him on the ground. They just camp him till they can throw him off stage and call it a day. Oh baby do I love me some RNG. Absolutely hilarious. However, it's also incredibly toxic and dishonest to say the least. While Down B is a mixed bag of fun, I think what truly sets Hero into giga cheater territory is the random crit smash attack. Sakurai, do you know how many RPG characters you have in your game? Literally all of them are capable of crits. Why is Hero the only one with this sinful mechanic? Also, I take it back, all the stat buffs he can give himself, plus bounce, and heal, and zoom, and kaboom, drive him into Giga Cheater. This is just over the top with crits though. Jeez man, top three cheaters in the game, easy. Shulk is one of those characters that if I ever see them play in tourney, I wonder not if they're gonna cheat, but how they will surprise me this time. Like every time I think I've seen it all with Shulk, the shit he does still gets me. Shield Art and Smash Art are by far the biggest culprits in this. Like top 5 worst situations in Smash is hanging at the ledge against a Shielding Shulk in Smash Art. You basically already lost your stock. Shield Art on the other hand does the opposite, where he can really make you question the idea of a kill confirm. Especially if your last hit was a multi hit, forget about it. And also the fact you have invincibility while you're changing arts too is just cherry on top, I'm over this. Shulk top 2, easy. And finally, fellas, we have what is absolutely the biggest cheater character in all of Smash Bros. This Gen 4 ass Pokemon was conceived with only unfairness and depravity in mind. You can tell by the fact that when he starts a match with even percent and even stocks, his moves have an intrinsic nerf to them. The devs are saying, what the fuck are you doing with the full health? You know you can't win like this. Only once Lucario reaches 65% on equal stocks will his moves do the intended amount of damage it's meant to. Everything after that is Cheaterville, fellas. His moves get a multiplier of almost 1.7 times at max aura. And not only that, but also rage stacks with it so they kill even earlier. It's so stupid. So unfair. Lucario is the ultimate cheater. And it's not even close. And this is the official cheater list, fellas. These are how each character ranks. Let me know what you think, or if you agree, disagree, and if I should rank characters on anything else. For now though, I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. See ya!